What's up, everybody? Griever here, and today we are going to be taking a look at and building this. So, what is this? If you've read the title of this video, you already know what it is. This is a Zinc 2.0 from Frontline Foam. Now, disclaimer, this was not sent to me. This was purchased with my own money. So, anything I say about this is going to be my own opinion. Not that anything like that has ever influenced anything I've ever said on this channel, but just throwing it out there for all the new people. So, hi, welcome. But, yes, this was a 2.0 that I had ordered maybe about, I think it was like a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks. Uh, it still seems like it actually completed and got out to me pretty quick. Um, I'll actually put a note here how long it actually did take to get to me. Uh, but funny enough, I ordered this, and then I realized, oh wait, I'm only going to have one magazine for it, not reading the description that it actually comes with two. Ordered two additional magazines, which have been sitting in my workshop for at least a week now. And then I realized, oh wait, this actually comes with a second one, so I actually have four magazines for this stuff. So, yay. But I'm going to take a look at those when we take a look at this. But this has been in my shop for at least an hour I really want to open this up because, as you can see, I have not. I really want to take a look at it. Uh, so let's go over to the workbench, see how screwed I am building this, and let's have fun with this. Okay, so here we are at the workbench. I have the Zip 2.0 ready to be opened up right here. I got my box open and knife, but you notice I have a few darts here, and I have the magazines here because I'm just going to torture myself a little bit more so we can just talk about these real quick. So... I have to say, print quality of these magazines are really, really nice. Like, you really, I mean, you can see the print lines, and if you do that, like with any 3D print, you can, you can scratch the print lines, but you really can't feel them all that much. Like, these are really, really smooth. I have to say, I'm very impressed with that. One thing I had wished, which is going to sound a little odd, is I wish... These actually came unassembled and you had to build them yourself because, I mean, I understand for, you know, these are nine bucks each. You get a fully assembled. That's fine. I wish I could have assembled it just for the simple fact of every once in a while, like I've been feeding darts into these, like since they basically came to try and break them in. But I'll notice that every once in a while, the follower does get kind of caught on these every once in a blue moon. So, um, but yeah, the, for the most part, there are no issues feeding. But like I said, just every once in a while, it just kind of gets that little hang up right at the top. So pointing that out. Um, also, the website says that these hold up to eight darts. So that means I should be able to load eight. But when I tried these, I was only actually able to load seven, which is why I have four different darts doubled here. And for those of you who don't know math, that's eight darts. So I actually wanted to just kind of feed these in real quick to see if I am going crazy or if I'm not. So I'm loading them in by color. So it's going or by type. And Yeah, there's no more compression in that spring, and I've only loaded seven. So, I don't know how they were able to fit eight in here, but if they did, those darts were squished to hell. So, and just to make sure I'm not going insane, we'll do it with the other magazine as well. Yeah, that's only seven darts. So the eight shot capacity is, I'm not going to say fabricated, but it's, it really should say up to seven darts. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I'm still happy with them. I'm glad I have the extra one now because <laughs> this actually came with two. I thought it only came with one, which is why I ordered two. But now. 
that's out of the way. Let's get into the box itself. So, a postcard from Front Life Fall. Little air baggies, eggs, everything, including a magazine spring. So, and that's everything in the box. Uh, it's all Ziploc together. There are no instructions, or at least no instructions here, which means I almost probably have to go online to, to get it. Uh, so, yeah, I, my zinc is going to be uh, purple and red, so I'm very happy with how these actually look. Uh, I gotta say, the... I don't know if this is correct or not, but just to get an idea of it. But I got to say, it is a nice size. Uh, I do like that. The purple looks really, really good. I do like it. The red is really nice. The one thing I got to say, though, is... Oh, okay, so these magazines I'll actually be able to put together. Oh, I have to actually cut my own spring. Okay. So, a couple of things I'm just noticing right off the bat. One, uh, this shell definitely is going to need some cleanup because, there, is it? there you go. Uh, you can definitely see uh, flashing and a little bit of print filament still in the trigger uh, in the magazine release. But other than that, uh, the print itself looks very very good so uh, I still have to obviously look at the rest of it to double check it but yeah this is this is definitely going to be a fun build I'm very happy with it it does have some Picatinny rail underneath it so if you wanted to put a flashlight I guess or whatnot these are the rest of the parts uh, the barrel fort which is nice it is it's a little barrel. It's sanded at both ends, chamfered, so no rough edges. Very happy with that. Uh, looks like I got a couple of different screw combinations, or not screw, spring combinations, which is nice. Uh, the plunger tube. The rest of all the parts here. Oh, I'm sorry. Apparently this is also... Uh, red as well so and it looks like yeah it looks like this is everything so I am going to take a couple of minutes to go online and actually figure out the uh, build process of this and then once I get that kind of squared away we'll be back in a minute to get this started Okay, so I've been looking for a build guide or instructions on this thing, and so far I've come up with nothing, which is not voting well in my favor. Uh, the only thing that I have figured out so far is, thanks to the print guide, is this is what the plunger is supposed to look like. So that's about as far as I have gotten. Uh, I really wanted to film the full build of everything here. That's just my phone going off. But I really wanted to film like the actual build itself. But I'll be perfectly honest right now. I have no blessed idea what the hell I'm doing. So I'm going to do a little bit more research. Hopefully once I can find some more information out, uh, I will get back to this. And, yeah, hopefully I will actually be able to get this done. So, I'll be back in a few.
Okay, this is where I'm actually going to stop for the night because I actually have to go to, if I want to finish it this weekend, I have to go to Home Depot to get more of these particular screws because I only have three and apparently I need six. Because I need one for this here, two for the back assembly, two for the front assembly, and I'm not even sure where that sixth one goes, but I need at least five. I'm not even sure what the hell this screw is for. Uh, I got to wait for the glue on those to try and still try and figure out how the hell to get this damn sear together. Um, I'm going to say this right now. So far, it's been an interesting build. But I'll be honest, I'm getting a little frustrated at this point because the instructions I finally did find, which came from the creator of this, are granted, you know, I'm not looking for complete hand-holding, but some things are being left to interpretation. And also for the fact that <laughs> I didn't get all the pieces. Uh, so yeah, that's a little frustrating, but... I am determined to get this done this weekend, so I'll check back with y'all in a little bit, or you'll see it right away, but I'll check back with you tomorrow after I go to Home Depot to get more of these 4x40 screws, which I hope to God I can get, or Lowe's, or whoever the hell carries them, but you know what I mean. Praise be the Nerf gods. This works now. So I finally figured out everything I was doing wrong. One, uh, I needed to, I think I used the wrong spring for the uh, the magazine release because this spring was meant for that, not the one that I used because that was actually a catch spring, which is giving me an issue where it wasn't firing. So I probably could use uh, two screws up here, but honestly, with everything that's here and all the friction, this is actually being held on very well. So it actually did only need three screws. It was the two in the back and the one here for the catch itself. Um, yeah, I just fired off a bunch from here, and it seems to be working. However, every once in a while, I'm getting a little, like, kind of blowback on the slide like it does that and i'm not 100 percent sure why also i figured out that long screw was actually for the steer so i finally figured that thing out but yeah every yeah like after a shot or so it like kind of gets stuck a little bit like i'm sure it's i or at least i'm hoping it's just everything trying to break in um yeah the trigger sticks a little bit i probably could have used a little bit of refinement on that that really didn't show up until everything was all together. But yeah, I was able to get this. Uh, roughly, this took me about two hours. Not Well, actually, no, about two, two and a half hours, um, including all the searching I did for the assembly guide itself. So I'm going to play around with this for a little bit, and then I'm going to give you my final thoughts on it after I've run a bunch of stuff through it, because... I may wind up switching over to this spring, uh, which I believe is a lighter one, or at least it feels like it's a lighter one. Right now I have the heavy spring in here, and I will give you my final thoughts on this next. Okay, so my SYNC 2.0 is completed, so now, and I've played around with it, so now I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this. I'm going to break it down to what I thought of the build, what I think of the blaster itself, and also just my kind of dealings with frontline foam and how it, all of this kind of went. So, first things first is the build itself. So, putting this together, it took me maybe about three hours, uh, give or take. If I'm rounding and rounding down, it was about three hours, maybe a little bit more. For the most part, it went okay. Uh, about half an hour to maybe 40 minutes of my what I'm counting as my build time was at me actually contacting Frontline Foam asking, hey, do you have a build guide for this? And then actually looking for a build guide because they don't have one yet. 
Now, I was told by Frontline Foam's customer support that there is a build guide getting edited and worked on. It just wasn't available by the time I was putting mine together. So, I did find a build guide from 1018 Design, who was the original designer of the Zinc and the Zinc 2.0, I believe. So, they had a build guide. I used that one. It wasn't a complete one-for-one -one because the hardware that 118 Designs has doesn't entirely match up to what Frontline Foam provides with their hardware kits. So there were a couple of things that did change, but for the most part, you can still figure out how it's all supposed to be assembled. Because really, that's what I was looking for the build guide for was the assembly process. Because I could have figured out where everything, where all the little bits and bobs and parts go. For the most part, I figured out where the majority of the parts went. It was just trying to figure out the magazine release, the sear, the catch, just, again, the little things that it was like, okay, which way does this go? Is this going in right? That, that kind of thing. Um, the issue, the only real big issues I had with the build itself were uh, the sear and the magazine release. The sear, because following the build guide from 108 Designs, you're supposed to assemble everything and then basically hold it in place with a long pin. Now, this could have been for the fact that, unfortunately, a few things were missing from my hardware kit, which I will address later. There could have been a long pin that I should have received, but... Sadly, I did not have it. I really don't remember seeing one in the hardware parts picture on Frontline Foam's website, so they very well could have omitted that one. But what the pin is supposed to do is supposed to hold everything in place while you get everything together and then eventually put the long screw here to hold it in place permanently. So just the frustration of trying to get everything to stay in place while I assembled it and all that kind of stuff, that was just... A little bit of a nuisance because I jumped the gun and I put in my magnets ahead of schedule. Again, this is why I needed. This is what I was kind of looking for the build guide for because I figured, oh, I know where the magnets go. I just got glue in, yada yada. Figured this way I'll put them together. This way the glue dries and they'll be set for later. Not thinking that they were actually going to, you know, cause an issue with the uh, the torsion spring that is part of the sear mechanism. But it all worked itself out, so no no big deal on that one. I, myself, probably just made it more complicated than it needed to be. Now, the other issue I had was the magazine release. And you saw earlier when I was showcasing the parts and all that stuff, 99% of this build was beautifully done and not a single problem with it whatsoever. However, the one issue I had was right inside of here. The... Prints. I don't know what exactly happened to it, but there's a lot of line separation, a lot of loose filament that I did have to trim up to make it like look good and actually flush so that I could actually fit the pieces in. But then I ran into another part where with the, uh, the holes left in, the part didn't fit in quite so uh, correctly, let's say. But... With a little bit of filing in, filing down of what was sticking up and around the hole to make it a little bigger, along with a little bit of light sanding on the actual magazine release itself, it works beautifully. Now, the other issue I had with it was the actual spring used for the magazine release, which also the 118 design showed that holding the spring in place actually utilized a small bolt and nut whereas again did not come with the front line design so making sure all of that stayed in place that was it was tricky but it worked but also the spring that was given for this part didn't really work for me it looked like it was a spring that was trimmed down so i think it may have gotten too trimmed so to speak because it fit but it didn't have a lot of uh tension when you tried to move it like i would put a magazine in here 
And there is a spring built, well, not built in, but you have to put the spring in, but there's a spring in the grip itself to help aid in the ejection of the magazines. And, yeah, even with that in there, this was not working properly. So I disassembled everything. I took a spring from the catch and put that in there, and that actually worked out beautifully. And now this thing is a friggin' champ. It works beautifully. But that gave me another issue of where I had to find a second uh, catch spring. But I was able to actually settle that myself because I had plenty of spares from a Home Depot set that I got ages ago. Uh, but yeah, the I was also miss I, as I had mentioned I was missing two screws, uh, three overall because it's supposed to come with six short silver screws. But I was able to build get this build and completed by using the three that I had, the two in the back here on the breech assembly, and then one here, which is actually holding in the catch uh, in the slide itself. The two that I was missing actually were for the front here. I was able to contact Frontline Foam after a bit. I did get the replacement springs no charge, which, you know, again, I'll discuss that later. But... The front was actually held on very well with a good amount of friction, but also with that piece, that uh, that silver screw there, that actually holds the priming rod, so it basically stayed pretty well solid. So it didn't go anywhere while I was doing any testing, and it worked beautifully. So, yeah, that was the build itself. Now, this was always touted as it wasn't, it wasn't considered a beginner project. But I have to say, though, with a build guide, this isn't a terrible build, especially if you're getting the 3D printed parts from Frontline Foam. Like, almost all of the, I guess you could say guesswork would be done, that would be done, is taken out of the equation since they have all the files and they can do them to the correct specifications. Whereas if you were printing the files yourself, you have to make sure that the uh, your 3D printer is tuned, Every you know, you have everything set properly, you know, down to the millimeter. Because if I remember correctly, the zinc, uh, the original zinc was, uh, it needed, it, it had to be very precise with its print quality. And I'm not sure if the zinc 2.0 falls in that same category, but I'm sure it does. So that's my thoughts on the build itself. Okay, now for my final thoughts on the blaster itself. So, starting with performance, I gotta say, the performance I'm getting out of this is actually pretty good. Uh, I have, it comes with two sets of springs, a heavy spring and a light spring. I opted for the heavy spring, which is what I originally did assemble it with, but also after testing, I decided to keep it here. Because, one, with the heavy spring, I'm getting, like, anywhere between 140 and 150 FPS, really kind of averaging in around like 146 147 so it's getting really good performance out of it the light spring i honestly the it was weird because this actually works better with a heavy spring because when i put the light spring in it just to test it out i felt like i was having more problems priming that than i did the heavy spring and the ranges i was getting or at least the readings i was getting off of it I was getting between 80 and 100 FPS. I think it may have topped off at 113, but a majority of them were 100 or under. And for that, that's basically stock performance of the Dart Zone Pro Mark II. That's also $40 cheaper than this, and you don't have to assemble it yourself. So my recommendation would be is if you are going to get this, stick with the higher performance spring. If you need something that does perform lower, just buy one of those and save yourself the money and time of assembly. The Zinc 2.0 also uses proprietary magazines, so that for some people could be a knock against it, but if you also kind of look at it from the perspective of a few other uh, probably big name 3D printed pistols, or not pistols, um, 3D printed blasters like the Spring Thunder or the Sobag or the Winchester, those all use 3D printed shells, and technically a shell would be a proprietary uh, loading style, so there is that. But yes, this does take proprietary magazines and 
you cannot use angled to talons, talons of really any kind, or any other kind of half dart magazine. So you are you are stuck basically using these things, unless somebody made longer versions of them. Then you know there's that. But yeah, that's my uh, thoughts on the Zinc 2.0. The overall construction of this pistol was is really good it's very solid it's actually weighted very nicely because you have a couple of metal pieces like the barrel the catch in here the spring so and plus the 3d prints are really solid so this thing has some heft to it and the cool thing is once you put a magazine in it whether it has darts or not it adds just that right amount of weight to it to make it feel like it's just perfectly balanced. So you can actually do things like that. And yes, it does spin. So, not that I'm a big proponent of that or whatever. If you want to do that, sure, go ahead. But, honestly, this is where I find my joy in it. Being able to do that. So, that's my final thoughts on the Zinc 2.0. Um... Overall, again, I do like it. If you're going for a performance blaster, then yes, I can recommend this. Um, however, however you want to do it, though, that's entirely up to you. If you want to just get the hardware kits, if you want to do like I did, get the hardware kit and the 3D printed parts, or if you want to get a completely assembled blaster, go for it however you want. But if you're just going for a good sidearm and you're not a big one way or another how well it performs, then honestly, I would say just get the Dart Zone Pro Mark II. Because you're going to get the same performance as this with the light spring in it. You're just probably only going to be missing like one or two shots out of it. So there's that. So... Okay, so my final thoughts on Frontline Foam and I, how my experience was for this build and order. So I've never ordered uh, something from Frontline Foam before, so I figured it would be a good idea to just look at the pros and cons of how everything went. So there were some pros, a fair bit of cons. I may be overlooking a couple of things or maybe taking things a little too far, but this is just how I feel. And yes, I am aware I'm wearing a different shirt because I looked at my previous uh, final thoughts and I was a little too ranty. So I wanted to like kind of redo it, refocus it to make sure I did cover everything. So on the pro side, uh, ordering everything was for the most part really easy and quick. Now I say for the most part because as I was placing the order for the zinc, you are able to choose your own color for it. And you're able to choose your primary color and your secondary color. So I wanted primarily purple with an accent of red all over it. And I'm glad I double checked the picture that they have, like, I think like fifth or sixth in the, you know, where you can rotate through and see things. Because that's where it actually tells you what is the primary color and what is the secondary color. Because according to them, this slide and this little piece right here, that's your primary color. Everything else is your secondary. That's a bit backwards in my opinion. Uh, because when I think a primary color, I'm thinking that's what it mostly is. When I think a secondary color, I'm thinking, okay, that's the accent color or that is the additional coloring, not the majority because the only thing that the primary color covers is the slide. That's it. The slide and the little cover for your catch. That's it. That's all the primary color covers. Your secondary co color covers the lower receiver, the trigger, your two magazines, the plunger. That's a primary color. I'm just stating that because if I didn't go back to double check myself, I would have had a purple slide on a red pistol and I would not have been happy with that. So that aside, 
once everything was placed and ordered, that actually went pretty quick. Now, I did make two orders, uh, both on the same day, one for the Zing 2.0 and another for my two additional magazines. Yes, I know I could have just put everything together. That was on me. I already ordered the Zinc and realized, wait, I think that only comes from Thorn Magazine. I'm going to need at least three, so let me go back, order the two. Not realizing, oh crap, it actually came with two, but I didn't realize that until after I ordered the two, so whatever. Basic, basically, I just paid extra shipping and really didn't have to, so that's just on me. So that's not a fault. I'm not faulting anyone for that one other than my dumb ass. But, yeah, I ordered everything on the 22nd of September. I got the magazines on the 28th, so that was a very nice turnaround time. It was less than a week, actually. The Zinc 2.0, I, again, ordered on the 22nd. I got that on the 1st. So, and again, that was a very nice turnaround for it, especially since I believe the website has it listed as like a two to three week lead time for, you know, any custom orders, that kind of thing. Excuse me. So, but I think that quicker turnaround, unfortunately, led to some of the other issues I had with my build, because... As I had mentioned earlier, I was short at least three of the six sil short silver screws that were supposed to come with this thing. I built mine off of the 118 design, uh, 118's build guide because Frontline Foam didn't have theirs. Now, I knew for a fact I was missing those screws because I looked quick at the hardware kit picture and I saw that they had multiple, they had at least six silver screws. I only had three because I knew I needed the two for the front. I'm like, no, this isn't going to work right. I emailed their customer support team uh, the day I got it about the build guide. They were out of office, no problem. I got my response on Monday. It was late Monday, but I still got it on Monday. I explained to them, yeah, I followed 118's design, uh, or I'm sorry, 118's build guide, so I had the thing built. Uh, however, I am missing three of those screws. So I sent that email off and I'm not counting that as, you know, a day of looking at it, but I didn't get a response back until the sixth. So I emailed them on the fourth, a response on the sixth saying, Hey, glad you're able to get it built. Oh no, we're sorry about the screws. We're going to look into that. And I was kind of confused at that point. I then get a response back from them on the Eighth, saying, oh yeah, we'll send you out those screws, uh, no problem. And they did go out on the 8th. But it took three days to, uh, I don't know, get an executive decision or, you know, make the general consensus that something got shorted and we needed to send replacement parts out. Because there were screws. It's not like I said, my slide split in half or I didn't get a lower receiver or I need another CNC part thing. No, I was missing some screws. That should have just been a response on the six of saying, okay, yeah, we'll get those out today. I don't know why it took an extra two days to authorize that or whatever, but you know, on the plus side, I was getting responses from customer service. The downside was it was taking really longer to get something that I was missing. But besides the silver screws that I was missing, I was also missing other parts because, as I had said, I had followed 118's uh, build guide, and I noticed there was definitely some discrepancies on how that was getting built and what I had and all that stuff. So I figured, okay, maybe the screws were just shorted. I didn't think anything else of the others. But then Frontline Foam actually put their build guide out as a video, and it followed the 118 build guide verbatim. So I was missing a lot more parts in my hardware kit than I had originally realized. So I was missing the long pin, which was needed to honestly make do the uh, sear a little easier, but also eventually would get cut down to hold the magazine release spring in better. And I'm talking about the one that's actually in the grip because there's a pin here and I don't have one. So there's that. And 
also the bolt and the bolt and the hex nut for the magazine release button screw that the, was in the 118 build guide and just I didn't have anything else. So I was definitely shorted more stuff in my hardware kit. Uh, honestly, I would say an easy remedy to this just to make sure everyone has the parts that they ordered, uh, be it the uh, 3D printed parts or the hardware kit, or like me, both of them, would just honestly be include a parts list. If you're not going to include a build guide, include a parts list just to say, hey, this is what you should have. If you're missing something, please let us know. You know, simple as that. So, again, for the most part, my experience wasn't terrible. Uh, for what I ordered, pricing-wise, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good money for what I what I ordered. The downside was, though, I definitely got shorted parts. I didn't know I got shorted parts. And customer service could use a little bit more of um, a, a, a little bit of boost in response time, just saying. But... So that's where I'm going to end it for this video. And as always, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the Zinc 2.0. Do you like the Zinc 1.0 better? Or the Zinc better? I don't know if it's not going to be the 1.0. Whatever. Let me know down in the comments below. I love reading them all. Um, and, ooh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know what me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And don't forget, we have a P.O. Box down in the description if you want to you know drop us a line say hi or something you know we'd love to hear from y'all uh but yeah again thank you all for watching i'll see you guys next time later